guys and welcome to another devlog video and this week I'm going to show you my progress on the animation system. This is really the last remaining big part of the engine that I had to go through in order to make the game. I originally accounted for about 15 days to get this task done and thankfully I was able to achieve that within that time frame, although it took a bit of unhealthy hours to finish it that fast. Seriously though, I don't think I've ever written more code than in the last few weeks. So before I started working on my game, I knew I was going to run into an issue. My engine really had no solid system for animations. Sure, there was some unfinished code for skinned meshes and stuff like that, but there was no overarching system really. Like there were kind of loose pieces of code. There were a couple of specific requirements that I really felt should be added to the engine. Like for example, I needed a system to configure skeletal animations for skinned meshes, because as you may know, for some reason, most 3D programs and file formats only support a single animation timeline, and people just kind of put all their animations back to back on that single timeline, which I kind of find a bit clunky to be honest, but hey, what are you gonna do? So I needed some kind of system where I could set up the animations in the engine and say, okay, this walk animation is frame zero through 150, this idle animation is frame 150 through 200 and stuff like that. So the second requirement is I had to be able to do VFX in engine which means keying different properties such as position, rotation, scale, but also stuff like UV offsets, as well as like radius and brightness and color of point lights, etc. And I should be able to put all of these things on a single timeline or something like a dope sheet so I can easily create VFX. And then lastly, I wanted a way to do simple animations in engine instead of having to create skinned meshes in a 3D program for everything. Like if I just wanted a box or like an item pickup to rotate and move up and down or something, I shouldn't have to do that in a 3D program. So I thought about this long and hard, and I came to the conclusion that I should create one system that does everything. I didn't want to kill one bird or two birds with one stone, I wanted to kill every bird with one stone. Bruh. So as you may recall from my last video, I have this visual system in my engine that allows me to create kind of these visual prefabs. This is already integrated into the editor, so I concluded that the fastest and easiest way to pull this off would be to add animations as part of a visual. So I started by sketching some of the most hideous mockups this world has ever seen. I also may or may not have taken a little peek at Unity's animation panel for inspiration. After refactoring a bunch of the visual code, I started implementing the backend for this into the engine. I knew performance was going to be important for this, so I really tried to minimize the use of virtual functions throughout the system and use static polymorphism using the syntactically beautiful C++ templates wherever possible. I've also made sure that we can parallelize the processing of animations so we can use 100% of our brain, I mean CPU, to speed up this process. And then came the hardest and most tedious part integrating everything into the editor. I'm not gonna lie, it was at this point where a dark thought briefly crossed my mind. Maybe I should have just used Unity instead. Nah, I can't lose my Sigma Mill status over this. Because Qt doesn't have anything that looks like a dope sheet widget built in, I had to create this bad boy from the ground up using OpenGL. So I started meticulously crafting a dope sheet widget with these little ticks and frame indicators. I implemented zooming in and out. I built the UIs using Qt's designer, which is really helpful by the way, I couldn't imagine building an editor from scratch by manually placing all those controls in code. I added a scrubbing feature so you can navigate to specific points in an animation. Then I went on and implemented keyframe selection so you could select multiple keyframes and edit and move them at the same time. And last but not least, I implemented skeleton poses as a keyable property. And there it is, the animation system is finished, mostly. As you can see, I can now key about any property I want and animate it, allowing me to create complex animations that will come in very handy for VFX. I didn't want to do a whole curve editor because, you know, I don't hate myself that much. So I just added this drop down box here so I can choose between one of several predefined interpolation curves. If you've ever used TSS, uh, some of these will sound familiar to you. The elastic one actually looks quite cool in my opinion. Once I was done with the animations themselves, it was time to implement some sort of animation mixer, something that allows you to set and queue up animations on a visual programmatically. You can define a set of mix or transition times between all animations, and then the mixer will crossfade these animations into each other. Here you can see an example of a running animation that's being mixed with the idle animation to provide a smooth transition. The mixer also has multiple tracks, so you can kind of play multiple animations over each other. You could have, for example, an animation that only keys the leg movement of a character, which can now easily be done in engine through the new bone masking feature, and play that over a sword swinging animation. By doing that, the character will now swing his swords while running. 
Though there's still some bugs with that that I didn't have time to fix in time for this recording, so you'll have to take my word for that. Phew, so I think I covered everything. Uh, I'm so glad I'm done with this, to be honest. This was like the last big engine hurdle I had to get through before I could really 100% focus on the game. Well, maybe not 100%, there's some tweaks and fixes here and there, but nothing as major as this. On the bright side, in the next video we're gonna start getting into the fun stuff. I'll be implementing an inventory system and items and stuff like that. So the first actual game systems, I guess you could say. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I really appreciate it. If you like the video, feel free to subscribe to make me feel better about wasting my life away. So yeah, thanks boys and girls.